Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand behind enemy lines. Rivals, not enemies though. I'm here in the Red Men TV surrounding. I've not been kidnapped. Um, and welcome, uh, well, I wel oh, yeah. uh, welcome myself really. I've got Chris and Paul, how are you doing lads? Yeah, good, very good. So, you say you've not been kidnapped, but then well, luckily don't, you don't know yet. I don't know yet. <laughs> you've not tried. So. <laughs> I'm a little bit weird. <laughs> I'm not tried, Yeah, I help. <laughs> I don't even know where I am. I, you know, um, tell my wife and kids I love them. But um, massive game on Sunday, Manchester United versus Liverpool. Um, we're, we're having a great time. We'll talk about that. I want to get your opinions on Solskjaer. But first of all, it would be wrong of me not to talk about this because, you know, from a United fan, it's probably a great thing to hear. Genuine title contenders. We are now into February. Um, how are you feeling? How are you feeling about it? <laughs> very, very, very happy. Very, very nervous. I think as a Liverpool fan, you know, we've had probably two proper challenges over the last 28 plus years. And, you know, it's been so long since we've won a league title. You forget sometimes and how difficult it is. And, you know, but this is what we live for as supporters. You want to be going into big games every week. Like Leicester at home was a massive game and it felt like a loss when we drew with them. You know, this is what you want. That's why you support your team. That's why you go to the game. It's why you watch football, to be involved in these huge games of football. And it doesn't come any bigger than Liverpool, Manchester United. I, uh, I feel physically sick yeah. all the time. Like I've not enjoyed this season in any way, shape or form. We keep preaching, like, enjoy the ride. It's not, it's not enjoyable because uh, uh, we, we used to have a handful of games every season and Manchester United is one of them where you, you, you get no enjoyment from those football matches. I, I've long said it, the only time you ever enjoy them is when you go two goals clear with 30 seconds left to play in the match and you can go, oh, this is amazing, this is why I watch football, this is blah, blah, blah. That's what our entire season has felt like and I can only surmise because I've never felt this before that this is what a, t a proper title challenge feels like because we didn't even feel this in 13 14, didn't feel it in 08, 08, 08 or 09. And I look at what you know, we, we were chatting over on, on Red Men, and you, you know, you've, you've got far more experience of winning league titles in, in, in recent memory than we have. I can only say that this, because I've not felt this, this is, must be what it feels like to have every game matter. Now I understand that mentality when I used to speak to Manchester United fans and they would they set themselves to a higher standard. Like, you know, there was no, oh, well, never mind, good good game. It was like, no, we win. We win everything. Otherwise, it's a, it's a massive failure. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a, I, don't, I don't really know how to handle this situation, but there it is. I think you're spot on. I think you're spot on because it's like, you know, you're right. You know, Wigan obviously aren't in the Premier League anymore, but playing Wigan away in April when you're in a title race and they suddenly turn into prime Barcelona, it's like, it, it's <laughs> it is like that. Every game becomes a slog and you, you hopefully haven't got that to come, but you probably have, I think, as well. And, and also, Man City, obviously I want them to win the league over yourselves. It'd be the same if, if it was Everton United, but I would respect them a lot more if they did win the title this year because I think winning it when you've already won it is very difficult yeah. but see they're already moving the goalposts on us it's for too long it's been like you haven't won a league title and then if you do win one you've got to win it twice Mate, you've just got to win it twice and, and, I'll tell you what <laughs> if you win it once that, I mean I because I, I, I grew up in the 80s and there was a lot I know a lot of Liverpool fans because you know Liverpool were very very good there and I was down the pub a few weeks ago with a mate and he was like you won't really begrudge me winning this. I said, mate, I know your wife, I know your kids. I'd rather you went bankrupt or on the streets than Liverpool win the league. That's how much I don't want you to win it. But I really like you as a mate. But, you know, some things matter more. But um, going into this game at the weekend, um, we, we've got injuries. Um, I was listening in the car about Firmino maybe having a virus. But presuming everyone's fit, um, how, how are you feeling about the game? Well, let me ask you first also, because obviously United. How, what, what are you both thinking about United since? Because the last time... Massive game at Anfield, we lost. Mourinho sacked a couple of days later. We've now got Solskjaer. I, 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 observing it, if you have done, because I know you've got your things on your own plate, how, how, how do you feel about United now? I'm nervous about the game. I think, you know, Manchester United have been playing good football. It's been much more of what you'd expect to see from a Manchester United side. It's not grinding out results as such. It's playing nice attacking football. And, you know, for years growing up, Alex Ferguson literally ruined my adulthood and childhood as a football fan because just so often you just see this man who I absolutely despise with every bone <laughs> in my body winning stuff with the side that I hate more than any other but I think beneath it all there's respect there because what he did is so incredible that he's got to be talked about up there with Bob Paisley who's one of the greatest managers of all time in English football and 
you know, the, the way that he set his team up, the way that he was able to win league titles were probably not even the best team in the league. Yeah. You know, just pure winning mentality and stuff. And I think that there is a little spark of that with this Manchester United. I don't know whether they're good enough to challenge next season if they keep Solskjaer or not. But there's that defiance there. There's that little spark of attacking football that you can see that it's almost like he's just gone in there and he's pumped them all up and they all believe that they deserve to wear the badge. I think that's one of Ferguson's best and most underrated qualities is he could make anybody think he was good enough to don that badge when sometimes they weren't. And at the moment, Manchester United do kind of feel like that. I used to joke about Ferguson's United. It was like, you remember when football manager became really complex and it all became about slider bars and what have you. Like, Ferguson was still allowed to carry on playing Chapman 2, where you just <laughs> yeah. literally put your team out in a vague shape, say attack, you can play anyone anywhere and it'll work for you. Whereas everyone else is like, oh no, I'll have 83% attack and press and blah, blah, blah. And, and you, you, you're cocking it up. He made it look very simple, and I think Solskjaer has gone back to a little bit, of, a little bit of that. And you're right; some of that is just aura, and some of that is, you know, kind of like letting the shackles off. You know, using Jose Mourinho as, as a, as a, I guess Chelsea did this a bit when Di Matteo came in, didn't he? And they've had it a couple of times where you go, "Well, there's the big bad man who's been ruining all your lives. What's all your problems, lads? Oh, well, you just want to play some football? Well, <laughs> welcome to my way of doing things. Go and show me what you can do." And Paul Pogba's been. Pivotal to that, and I, I, I won't lie, I put him in my fancy team, and he's been he's been absolutely flying for me lately, because he's a world class talent. He's, he's that good at football. It's very rare. You only watch someone, and you watch them play for thirty seconds, and you're like, yeah, him. He's got it. He's got it all day. Not many footballers are genuinely like that, and uh, Paul Pogba is, and the, he's he's the big concern for me because I if Liverpool. Liverpool need to get Fabinho into the midfield and I don't know how possible that's going to be at the weekend. Um, so what would your midfield three be at the moment? Because that's one thing I think United fans look at Liverpool and we, we know your front three, but what, how does your midfield work? Our, our midfield three is in, in a, is in a little bit of flux at the moment and some of it's to do with injuries at the back. So all things being equal, I think the best midfield three, I really, I really, it's got Fabinho in it and it's probably got one out. if I could certainly got one out in it. It's whether it's a two-man midfield, it's 4-2-3-1 or 4-3-3. And if it's 4-3-3, it's, it's still Oxley chamberlain even though he's not fit. And then it's maybe, we're just starting to see a little bit out of Naby Keita, finally. Um, so it might be him. It's, it's, hard, it's hard, isn't it? Because yeah. Jordan Henderson probably goes in there, but if it's a 4-3-3, where does he, where, I don't know where he plays in I, that. I think, I think, you know, the way that Liverpool played against Bournemouth, and listen, we're going to have to say we, we're recording this before the Bayern Munich game, I think Liverpool will probably play 4-3-3 against Bayern Munich, and I expect Liverpool to play 4-3-3 against Manchester United. And if that's the case, I expect to see Fabinho in the six, because Virgil van Dijk will be back after his suspension in the Champions League. He'll probably be paired alongside Matip in the centre of defence. So you'll have Fabinho in the six, you'll have Wijnaldum, and you'll have Naby Keita, and that's the midfield three. And Wijnaldum will be very much box-to-box -box midfielder, Fabinho will be sitting deep and looking to spray the ball around. And then you've got Naby Keita, who I believe will be a little bit of an X factor, a little bit of an enigma. When you pick the ball up, he looks where the goal is and just heads straight there. And he'll be slaloming, hopefully, through players if he's got that confidence that I think he's starting to show at the moment. It seems, I think this is where the game is going to be won and lost because you talk about, you know, I don't watch Liverpool week in, week out. And I, I, I talk about Herrera and I say, you know, he's the quintessential box to box. He is absolutely massive. And it irritates me like when on BBC last night they go, Paul Pogba, man of the match. And I go, you are a media company watching this game and you're giving it to Paul Pogba just because it's Paul Pogba the bling. And Herrera is clearly man of the match. Uh, and he scored a goal as well. And I think a lot of Liverpool fans, for some reason, they do follow me on Twitter. And they, I think it's because I say Salah's better than Hazard. But they go... <laughs> it absolutely they'll say, we're now that's Chelsea fans follow you. <laughs> yeah. Wijnaldum is that for us, he does that job, so that's going to be interesting. We've got obviously Matty Troop patrols, and then you've got Pogba with, with the X-Factor. So I think that is going to be a massive part of, of where it goes on the, Sunday. What? Is it likely to be Lukaku? <sighs> you, you, what have you done to Lukaku, by the way? What have, what have Man United done to He was the head and shoulders best young centre-forward in world football. And now he, he looks like he's, he's addicted to the loathed. gym. Who asked, who asked him to get bigger? I think, well, it's funny because you've got, you've got a Greg sponsorship. You've got to be, well, happened? fair play. You've got to be careful <laughs> about that sort of thing, haven't you? Because like Luke Shaw had this, and I think it's very unfair. I think Luke Shaw's a great player. And then this start of this season, people start going, oh, he's been down, Greg's and all this, that and the other. And I'm like, yeah, I've got to be a bit careful about that because maybe he has. I don't know whether he's got an eating disorder or whatever. <laughs> but Shit. apparently he said to himself, um, he said it himself about, 
November time, I need to shed some bulk. I bulked up for the World Cup. I was told to do it, and I need to get rid of it. So it's not fat, it's, it, it's, it is muscle. But we're now in February, and he's still got the same bulk. I mean, Slim and world. I, I, you look at him at Everton, and, it, and it, it, the, the pictures are easy. Some, I mean, some United fans are saying it's the kit because we've got a black bit around there. It's like it's not the kit. He has bulked up, <laughs> it's and he's slow. Slim and colour, anyway. Yeah, yeah. He's so uh, yeah. No, but he's also he's also mid twenties. It happens in your mid twenties anyway. But he, it's, I think it's just the way you, you use him. You know, I, I think there's a everyone looks at Lukaku and goes target man because he's big. And he's not. not. He never was. He's ne- because his touch isn't good enough to be a target man. He's been not good running, isn't he? Exactly. He, he's an on-the-shoulder kind of player. And it's whether he's able to can still be that when he's carrying the, the extra ball. Well, he wouldn't work for you. wouldn't work for City. wouldn't work for Chelsea. wouldn't work for us. I think that's the problem. He's a mid-table striker. Or he's a striker in a in a team like Belgium where it doesn't really matter what, what you do. You're going to get goals. But 20-goal a season centre Premier League centre forward. I mean, again, we had, we had this. It doesn't mean he's not. It just means that you're right. That he doesn't necessarily fit what you're looking to do. But he'll be gone. I think it's, it's, it's an interesting one, though. He's it is a good player. It is, and I, I would I would hope that he's not playing because I think Rashford is the man to play, and I, I think Martial or Lingard will be back, if not both. Marcus Rashford is the one player that I am genuinely jealous of in Man mm-hmm. United's entire squad. Like, because we, I mean, a year ago there was a few, there would have been a handful more. Like, a, a year ago, I'd have been more jealous of De Gea, of course. Like, but. I, I'm, I'm happy with our goalkeeping situation. Who would you drop into your eleven? I mean, I don't know whether Rashford would drop in, but I know there won't be many, and, and that's fine because you're top of the league and, and you're Liverpool fans. But if you if you would you drop Pogba de Gea? The way Pogba's been playing the last few weeks, I think yeah, absolutely. Um, de Gea, I'm comfortable with Allison, same as Paul. Rashford would be one of the players that I'd look to get in the on the pitch in some way, shape, or form. Whether that's you know, you make me could you move Mane inside into a ten and put Rashford over on the left wing or something? He's just lethal. He's dangerous. We saw what he did to Trent Alexander Arnold last year. Yeah, as he's well. a very very good right back, isn't he? And, he, and yeah. he, he roasted him. You know, and he does that to players consistently. He's got something about him where he makes things happen. And I think in a game sometimes, especially for Liverpool, we've come up against it a lot this season where people park the ball slow block sides. You need someone who can beat a man, and Rashford beats a man for fun. Mm. And then it creates space for everybody else. So you'd yeah. always look to get someone like that I, on your side. I've been banging the Martial drum for a few years because as soon as Mourinho came in, I was like, he, "Martial won't suit Mourinho. He'll fucking hate, he'll, he will hate Martial." And I was like, "I remember it was about three. Was it three you, you I was going, always get him, Martial, Just yeah. go. He won't like him. He'll be on the cheap. Go and try and get him." Um, but they're the th- they're th- Martial, uh, Rashford, and I wouldn't. I'll be honest. Even though he's amazing, I, I think he's a fantastic footballer, and I, 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 I like watching him. I just wouldn't want Pogba at Liverpool because I don't think his attitude suits us and I think it's all That's the stuff fair. that comes with him I don't like. Yeah. You know, you said like Old Trafford a couple of years ago and it's, you've got a hashtag Pogba on the side of the pitch and he had his, hair, his special haircut for the match and his special emoji that came with it and all that and it's like, you don't need that stuff around, that extra focus that just adds uh, uh, senseless pressure. He's one of those players who plays for the name on the back of his shirt, not the badge on the front, Pogba. Yeah. It's funny you say that because a lot of United fans love that, but I'm a little bit older and I'm a little bit old school. And, and I do sort of envy the Liverpool and, and I suppose one of the things I envy City about as well, and there's not a lot, is that they, they're, they're, they, they go and play football. It's not about the merch and the commerciality of it. And I understand why United do it, because it's, you know, it, it does get you more fans and uh, ultimately. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, that is something that um, that, that I do, I, I, that I'm not a big fan of. So I can I can see that, but I, for me, I, I love Paul Pogba. Hey, look, if I was player. 14 again, I'd, yeah, I'd probably love think it. it was all amazing, because you do, it, that's, just, that's just what modern footballers are like. They've got to embrace the whole thing. It's just that inevitably there's no football for old men is there like you know what I mean the older you get the more that, that one player up. in black boots you made up with oh, yeah, he's, God, he's got yeah. black boots on what a guy I love not, players in black boots as long as they're not bloody pink yeah <laughs> yeah but that you know it, this is all the thing isn't it you know I, so I, I get it Paul Pogba if he marries up on the pitch with all the other stuff then he's perfect isn't he because he's, he's marketable he's got charisma personality and if he can do it on the pitch then why wouldn't you want a Paul Pogba because you're going to bring loads of money and attention to your football club and in a positive sense if he's actually producing it's just just that the problem is he's always going to have is that if he stops producing for any length of time, it all that stuff becomes a problem. Yeah. Not not part of it. Not part of his personality. It's stuff that people look to change about him. Whereas you can't tell Paul Pogba to ditch his Instagram or his whatever. It's just he's he's just a kid, isn't he? He loves he loves all that stuff. And fair play to him. But I I I hope he goes back to being that Paul Pogba for the weekend because um, if he wants to if he wants to try and beat us, I want to say. 
I'm going to make the Mario Balotelli comparison, and he's a much, much, much better footballer than Balotelli ever was. But you know, you get that impression with a lot sometimes who, when he misplaces a pass, he thinks like, "Oh God, I'm going to get slaughtered on Twitter for this." You know what I mean? Like you know that he's worried about that he's worried about things off the pitch rather than being 100 percent focused on on what he does on the pitch. But when he is focused on it, he's yeah, he, he, he could be the best midfielder in the world. Well, that, and that's the danger, because it's all about opinion, isn't it? And my personal opinion is, that I, from what I see of Pogba, I don't see that. But ultimately, it's about perception. And if other clubs see that, then that's a shame for Pogba, isn't it? Because that's how he gets perceived. But, I mean, I think he's been fantastic. And I think, over the, especially under Oli, and, and again, I think Sunday is such a massive test for him, because he's jumping all these hurdles. But if he can have a big game like he did against Chelsea, against you, then, you know, all, all the better. I liked what you said about the, the Liverpool, uh, you know, it not being a comfortable experience because it's, it reminded me of something I said to one of my mates when I was living over in Ireland and we were going down the pub to watch it at Anfield and I was like, I absolutely hate this one game of the season more than ever because unless you're comfortably 4-0 up with a minute to go, you always feel it can get turned around. It's not pleasant viewing because it matters, matters so much. Um, I, f I imagine that's how you're going to feel on Sunday going into it. Um, is it pivot? Is it if you win this game, do you think it's pivotable to your title? I don't know what you've got after because there's a couple, we've got we've got midweek Palace and then we've got Southampton, so there's nine points in a week to be played. But the momentum is always spoken about, and, and as somebody who's man, uh, not managed, I wish I had uh, supported a team that's won a lot of titles, I, I do think that if you, as much as I hate to say, it, I think if you beat us at Old Trafford, it's going to be very hard to wrestle that grip on the title for you? I think it just gives it gives the squad a belief, doesn't it? You know, they'll have hopefully have come through a tough test against Bayern Munich and Manchester United with another, uh, you know, another couple of tough fixtures to come down the line. Obviously, we've still got Everton to play in the league and Chelsea and a second leg against Bayern. So, I think it gives us confidence and it might hurt the confidence of Man City because they'll have been pinpointing this on the calendar yes. going, the way that Manchester United are playing right now, they need, they'll drop points there and if they don't drop points there, if they win three points, their entire squad goes, Oh, we're not going to catch them and that might just be that glimmer of so something that we need to kick on from there perfect world scenario is they put the feet they, they they slump home haven't got the coach back from london or whatever at the, at the weekend and they've We've lost, they've lost the league cup final and they've seen that you know that liverpool have gone back clear top of the, the premier league and that's when the first real doubts start to creep in of maybe an aguero injury <laughs> why yeah go on Dream. I'm fancy, again. <laughs> fancy that, yeah, all of that, like, you I mean, all, all that stuff. So, that, Ed, that's Edison the as well. Yeah, well, I mean, whatever. I, I know, but I, I think that, I want, that it's, psycholo it's a psychological war, and, you know, they're fighting on four fronts, aren't they? And I, you want, we need to start, you know, we'll get back into their heads, which I think we were firmly in January. And if we can do it against United, then, yeah, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a message that Liverpool could potentially send. It's just the problem is with this, Mark, is that, that's our narrative, that's how we're looking into it, and we, we all do this with our football clubs. We forget there's an entire other football club that goes into this match with their own narratives and their own thoughts and feelings on this. And as I say, for you, it, um, for, you know, this is the, it's almost not directly playing for Solskjaer's future, but by the same token, we're playing for a, you know, potentially to win the league. And this, this is one of those games when he, gets, when he signs his full-time contract, you could well be looking back at this game and going, well, when we beat Liverpool at Old Trafford, that was the moment we knew. I mean, look, you know, from a United point of view, we, we need this because if we lose, then Arsenal lot are going to be blagging on, we're back in six. I wouldn't so, worry about yeah. them, though, to be fair. But ultimately, if we win, we've done everything we can to stop you winning the title. So, we, you know, we lost to Anfield. If we lose, that's six points we've given you. And I always say that no matter who you are, if you Liverpool win the league on your watch... You've got to be very, very, very seriously looked at as whether you're the man for United. And, and Ollie will do everything he can with the players that he's got to, to go out and get something. But for us, you know, it, 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 I said last night, winning, beating Chelsea's nice. I'd rather lose 6 0 and Lukaku score off his arse in the last minute with a lucky winner against you because that's how important it is. And I, I don't, I don't uh, build that up any, you know, I build it up as high as it needs to go because it's the rivalry that matters. How do you think it's going to go? I think it's going to be absolutely insane. It's just going to be one of those games where both teams decide that we're going to go for it. I think, you know, I'd, I'd like to hope that, you know, we start quite pragmatically. I don't think that'll be the case. I think there'll be a loud noise in Old Trafford. I think your fans will be on it. You'll be looking to back them to the hilt. You'll be wanting to dent Liverpool's title chances and that will affect the game. I think Manchester United will start fast. Liverpool will have to soak up that pressure first 10 minutes, hope to quieten the crowd a little bit. And then they'll start to sort of grind the gears and start. And I think you'll just see counter attack after counter attack. And it wouldn't surprise me if 
the most dangerous each team looked was when the other team had a corner and we were coming off that and there was players just racing down and um, it could be decided by who, which goalkeeper's better, to be honest with you. I really think it could be. There could be that many chances that the goalkeeper could be pivotal. Yeah, I... Um... This is the time of the season where I think Liverpool have been done very well at being, you know, they've been solid and they've been grinding results out. We could. This is the time of the season where we historically start to kick into high gear um, and keep going about the title thing. I, if the title goes how it should go, and that Liverpool will do it in the hardest way possible, which means we'll draw at Old Trafford and we'll it'll go down to the last game of the season. If Liverpool want to prove to us all that they're ready to be truly elite. This, it'd be nice to go and send a message at Old Trafford because I think the Solskjaer factor, as much as that can very much go in your favour, and this look as with any football match, it can go anyway. But I think it's it's it, it's possible for United to put a good to put a really good win in here, as much as it is us to do it. I my feeling is that this could be a, this could be a good Liverpool win. It's interesting because I think I want Solskjaer to be the manager of Manchester United, and but if we were to get turned over four 0 at Old Trafford. <laughs> By by Liverpool, it's you know it's that it's that bigger game that it that it that it would uh, I'd, I'd have to question it myself because it is that important. But I think it's one of those games, isn't it, where you go. I think the referee could have a really big impact mm. on this. I mean, that he nearly did last night. Matic probably should have been sent off, and you just think an early yellow card to somebody. Um, and I'm tempted to say that I hope the referee doesn't have an impact on it because I just hope it's a good game. But actually, that's not that's nonsense. If if he dodgily sends off one of Salah for you. Then, uh, sorry, that, that is the rivalry. But uh, score predictions? 3-2 Liverpool. 4-3 Liverpool. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go 2-1 United, which, what, what, however it goes, we're, none of us are going to have a nice 90 minutes, are we? Cause, unless somebody absolutely blasts it through. But well, 4-2 Liverpool then. Fourth goal with, with three minutes to go would suit, me, would suit me down to the ground and I can just slump on, in a heap on the floor and start crying and then pick myself up and get on with the post-match videos, you know. Right. Well, look, it's going to be a fantastic game. I can't wait for it. And, you know, the rivalry matters, but it's got everything this game. And I know you've, you've, we're recording before the Bayern game, so you've got that to come before. But uh, uh, we've, we can sit back now as United fans and look forward to it. Uh, get your thoughts in the comments below. And uh, if you want to shout out your channel, lads, Red yeah, Men TV. Red Men TV on YouTube, the biggest independent Liverpool football club channel. You'd hate <laughs> it, but if you do fancy a little bit of it, it's over there anyway. Hopefully we'll all be going there Sunday night just to see how the, the reactions. Yeah, let's hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching.